Hi everybody, I'm just going to give it a few seconds to make sure everyone's in the webinar and is live with us today with myself, Karen and Kenny from Music and Performing Arts. Um, if you can see and hear me okay, please just pop a, a wave or a hello in the right hand column into the live chat window for me, please. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us. Uh, so my name's Karen, as I mentioned, and I'm going to be your host for the next 30 minutes. Thank you for joining us today to find out more about performing arts and music. I'm going to be shortly introducing Kenny, who's one of our performing arts and music tutors here at the college, who's going to go th more through uh, the different units that you're going to study, the facilities that we have, and where some of our students have gone on to. Now, visitors to our normal open day tell us that they really value uh, the opportunity to look around the college and to find out more about our facilities. But unfortunately, we're unable to offer that at the moment, although we do have some really great 360 degree photos available on our website. So please check those out. Um, like I said, Kenny's here today to answer any questions that you have. Uh, so please do ask anything that you need. Just some general housekeeping to start us off. If you do have any questions, as I mentioned, as we go through, please just pop them um, in the chat to the right hand side. And my colleague Hayley is here today to answer anything that you need. If we don't have the opportunity to answer your question, please don't worry. We're going to pick that up via email after the session. So I've popped a poll under the poll tab on the right hand side of your screen. Just to let me know whether you're here today to find out some more information, whether you've already applied for music or whether you've applied for performing arts, please. Great, Kenny. So we've got a mix. Some have already applied for music and some have already applied for performing arts. Great. So everyone, next up, I'd like to introduce uh, our principal, Simon Cook, who's going to share a little bit more about the session today and about the college. Hello there, I'm Simon and I'm the principal of Mid Kent College. It's great to be able to talk to you and uh, I so wish I, was be able, I would be able to talk to you in person but virtually and hopefully your opportunity to get to know a little bit more about the college will help you with your decisions that you need to make. So over the next 30 minutes in this virtual open event you're going to have an opportunity to meet one of the tutors from your chosen subject area. Really make the most of that time to find out what it means for you. Um, ask some questions. No question is a silly question. Please ask whatever question you've got. Take some notes, but make sure that you've got the info that you really need to make that decision about what you want to do in September. And if you're really not sure what you want to do, then you're not the only person. There are lots of people every year that we see, it won't be any different the current year under these current circumstances, who really don't know what they want to do. There might be even some of you who are thinking you really don't know what to do because you see what's going on in the world and you're not quite sure what job prospects there may be. By the time you finish your programme, the world will be a different place again and there will be many more opportunities then that may not exist now. So talk to our staff about it. And also don't be frightened if you don't know what you want to do. Have a look at some of our other sessions. Come into other sessions and see. What's really important, and one thing I say to everybody who comes into the college, you must feel comfortable with the people that you're going to be sharing your next few months and years with. And I want you to feel comfortable that you're going to be able to flourish and thrive as a person, not just study a qualification, but flourish and thrive as a person with those people you talk to. So if you don't get any of the answers that you think you need in the virtual session, we've got a brilliant team on our course inquiries and we've got a brilliant team in our careers uh, office who will help you navigate the language, what options there are, and for you, what's the right thing to do, um, which is a question we often get asked every year. I hope you enjoy your session, and I really, really hope that I get to see you very, very soon at the college, and uh, we look forward to welcoming you with us in September, if not in person, virtually, that's for sure. Good luck. As Simon said, no question is a silly question, so please do pop in the window if there's anything that you'd like to know. So next up, I'd like to properly introduce Kenny, who's going to join us to share more about the different programmes and facilities we have at the college. Hi, Kenny, can you hear Hi. us? Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Perfect. Excellent. Yep. So I've popped your slides underneath for you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Hi, so my name is Kenny Cotter. So I'm um, responsible mainly for the Level 3 Music Performance course. I'm also involved, um, get involved in performing arts and music technology as well. So um, whatever area that you're, you've applied for, I have some um, sort of knowledge and experience of what goes on. So I'm going to take you through a few slides here explaining uh, what it is we do and the levels. Um, so let me go through here. So so these are our, um, our courses and levels. So 
you've if you've already been in um, discussion with us during the interviews, you would have heard us talk about level one, level two, and level three. So um, the way it works is we've got a level one in music performance and production art. So that course uh, contains the basic uh, ingredients of music performance, music technology, and also uh, performing arts, uh, performing and production arts as well. So that gives you like, the, the, the basic groundwork and the skills to move on. Um, if you're successfully completing a level one, um, then we've got it splits off into two level twos. So we've got a level two in music, which focuses on performance and production. So technology students and performance students will do the same qualification. But within that qualification, as you go through it, you can start differentiating and focusing on the area that you're most interested in. And then on, on the other, uh, on the performing arts pathway, um, within performing arts, you've got, you look at uh, acting, uh, musical theatre and dance, uh, all as a, an overall thing and that, de um, that will develop your skills further. Then from uh, level two, so from the music level two, we've got you, at level three, you have two choices. So you can either go on the performance pathway, which is obviously much, much more uh, involved with playing your instrument and um, doing live performances and everything that comes with that. And then the technology pathway, which is more to do with um, being in the, in the recording studio, learning how to use a mixing desk, doing live sound. And it's, that, that's the more um, hands-on with the equipment um, side of things. And then in the performing arts, if you've gone through the performing arts um, pathway, then you get to level three, performing, performing and production arts, uh, which is, again, taking the same things as level two, but just ramping it up to like a higher level uh, and uh, getting you ready for like all, all the level three courses will get you into a situation where then you can progress on to university or employment um okay so that's those are the levels and depending on your gcse results it will depend on which um level that you start on some of you might come in and start on level three straight away rather than going through all three levels so um within the music pathways so these are the general topics that we cover so we've got um so in music performance we do live and studio performances so um a lot of that is obviously playing your instrument or singing uh composition so we use different music software for that, and you learn like more traditional composing techniques as well. Uh, songwriting, improvisation. So within that, uh, you'll be learning how to use elements of music theory and learning to like play in different styles and be able to be spontaneous with what you create. Music theory, that's the basics of uh, reading and writing music, a uh, bit of music history and research. Uh, you'll see like research will pop up in all of the... Um, uh, the qualifications. Now on the music technology pathway, so some of the things that are very similar with music performance, but you're, like I said before, the main focus is you look at studio and sound engineering, music production, live sound, uh, again, and then with composition. I think if you're doing music tech, a lot of the music tech students end up being more on like the electronic dance music production side of things or um, sort of modern styles, whereas in music performance, it's normally like more guitar-based stuff, but there, you know, a lot of the time it is quite mixed and matched. Uh, and then within music tech, you also do theory, history, and research too. Um, on the performing arts pathway, so um, the main three areas are musical theatre, dance, and acting. And you look at stage production, uh, which is actually the uh, you know, the, the props and uh, being stage hands and actually putting on a show. Uh, front of house, that's like dealing with the public at uh, uh, live theatre productions and then you'll have a weekly technique class in tap ballet jazz contemporary singing and acting and then uh you do like the theory of performing arts and the history and research okay so those are the main things now over the different levels it would be that would be dependent on sort of how in depth you go with these but uh, these are covered uh, throughout the whole of the levels one to three okay so um so the work placement. So throughout the program, you will complete both internal and external work placements. Uh, there'll be opportunities within the college to take part in industry level activities, such as theatre work and shows, live music gigs and studio recording sessions. One of our uh, big ones is the, the Panto that we do every year uh, in December. So that's a collaboration between performing arts and music. Um, we have a lot of um, a lot of schools come in and watch that. Do like um, really good as well. Seven shows. Yeah, it's always good fun. Um, and then uh, external placements. So those are the responsibility of the student to find, but you will be supported by staff to help you find them. And then staff will also help broker some external opportunities within our, with our local contacts where they're possible. 
Um, so, for example, with the music students, uh, we've got some venues that we've got regular, um, do regular performances with, and uh, performing arts have got lots of um, uh, contacts as well. Um, so previous students, for example, have completed a wide range of placements, so including local music venues, events, theatres, uh, some of them even did uh, some backstage work for Mamma Mia in the West End. Uh, had some work at radio stations, studios, schools, and then so quite a large percentage of our, our um, live our um, work experience is done from live briefs. So clients will give us something to work with. So it may be like some uh, bringing in external clients into our studio and uh, things like that. So um, there's a, a lot of uh, different work experience opportunities that you're. Uh, We'll hopefully get involved with okay so progression now um i said before that after from le after level three many go on to university so some of our students have gone to high profile conservatoires uh, so for example performing arts students have been offered places at uh, such as bird college performance college erdang royal center schools of speech and drama brighton academy and northbrook met uh, music students uh, a lot of them go to BIM, which is a Brighton Institute of uh, Modern Music, uh, got one in London and in Brighton, um, ACM in Guildford, uh, University of Kent, Christchurch, Leeds and Edinburgh. Um, so as you can see, they go off to a wide range of, uh, of places. Uh, some music students go on to work in the, in the industry as freelance musicians, uh, sound engineers, producers and teachers. Some have even gone on to be picked up by the BBC introducing for their original music. We had a student, uh, Taylor Paisley French, who's uh, done a lot of work with with um, BB Institu BBC introducing, end up working with um, Jamie Cullum at their 5G uh, event. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so there's been yeah. there's quite a few. And I know another uh, band has just been picked up by BB BBC introducing of ex students as well. Um, and some performing arts students have gone on to work uh, performing on various stages, such as the Marlowe, the Orchard, Saddle as well, Disneyland Paris, Brit Awards, X Factor. Uh, others have found work as children's entertainers, touring as lead vocalists on cruise ships, creative directors and members of professional theatre companies, residential performers at top hotels such as Park Lane Hilton, and some have become drama and dance teachers. So we do have um, a lot of students that actually go out and you know, do something with this once they leave. Um, so some of the events that we have, um, now some of these do sometimes tie in with work experience, but some are like standalone um, enrichment events. So we've had a, f a few years ago, the performing arts students went on New York residential where they went to see some uh, shows in, over there. Um, we've had the BBC introducing event, uh, the tobacco dock that we went to last year. That was really interesting. Um, we've had KFE and world skills competitions. Now, bef um, a couple of years ago, the music performance students, we won our gold medal and then the competition sadly doesn't run anymore. So we're still actually the reigning champions of, of the UK. <laughs> yeah. That's what you so, want. Yep. Um, and then performing arts students have been to Disneyland Paris, London West End shows. Uh, we do regular visits to universities uh, and obviously we've got the pantomime, which we spoke about, and then regular music gigs and performing arts shows. So it's a, a hub of creative um, activity. It's a, it's a good place to be. And that's it. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, Kenny. That's really informative. Guys, if you've got any questions about what Kenny's shared or anything that you're not too sure on, uh, please just let us know. Kenny, I've got a couple of questions to start us okay. off, if that's OK. Um, we saw a couple of facilities in those pictures. Can you just share yeah. a little bit about the facilities for both music and performing arts, please? Yes. So for music performance, we have four uh, rehearsal rooms and one larger live room, which um, it doubles up as a small venue as well. So and we've got light, lighting rig and everything in there. So we use that as our classroom as well for the performing lessons. Um, and then we've also got a, a studio with like um, two large studio rooms in there and a live room. Um, that's right up, up in the music tech department. We've got two music sequencing rooms that are kitted out with uh, Apple Max with all the latest music software. And then performing arts and music share the theatre. That's our big space where we put the pantos and the big gigs, everything on. Uh, and then performing arts have got quite a few different um, workshops, workshop rooms. So uh, they've got places where you can do dance and acting and uh, plenty of space so it's um yeah we're very well resourced in terms of like rooms great thank you very much and you can see some of those through our 360 photos on our website as i mentioned um next up kenny um how does english and maths fit into both music and performing arts okay so um english and maths so if you um do not manage to get your gcse's uh, at grade four or above then you will 
everyone is required to retake their maths and English. Aside from that, if you do have your GCSEs already, then English and maths are embedded into the curriculum. So for, I can give you an example from a music point of view. So maths is very important in terms of music theory because all the scales, modes, um, chords, and um, time signatures are all based on understanding different. Um, it, it basically, they're all based on maths. So if you can, if you know the, for, the formula of these things, you can work through them really easily. And then also things like budgets and um, organizing spaces as well for um, you know, like venues, measuring sizes, and things like that. So that, that's very important. And then the English will be embedded very clearly in your written work, research, um, learning like the Harvard conventions of, of research and things like that that you all. Um, be able to carry on to university with you and out into employment. Great, thank you. Um, so you mentioned research a couple of times yeah. in the different units. What would that involve? What can you give us some examples what our students might be researching? Okay, so for example, our first project for music performance last year, and music technology was uh, was based around Black History Month. So they within the performance student uh, performance element, we put on a gig where students learn songs from influential black black artists over the um, they've done over the last hundred years and um so they will research like the history of um where the music came from the culture surrounding it and then look at how the learning about like the critical perspectives like how people view that music and how that would affect you personally and how you would interpret it so it's a uh, so whatever the subject is that you're looking at at that particular moment you'll be expected to do like a little bit of background just research to get involved uh, with the actual topic that you're doing and be able to use it in what you do. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, I've had a question through, if that's okay, from our live okay. chat. Um, would you be able to give a few details about whether we have to wear uniform, whether students bring in their own equipment and things like that, or their own yes. musical instruments and things? Okay, yes. Yeah. So in terms of performing arts, I know they are drawing up a list of, they've got a particular uniform that, um, that you have to wear. Uh, so for different things for like dance and performing arts. Uh, and acting so they're they'd be drawing up a list and they'll be giving uh, out a link which you can go to a shop uh, an online shop that everything is in there so you can get like, the whole uniform so um, we'll be able to give you some more details about that when um, i know performing arts are just currently working out um working it all out at the moment so that will come out to you in due course uh for, for music so we expect uh, everyone's bringing in their own instruments and for singers, their own microphones and XLR leads. Um, again, you will get a list of what's required. Um, obviously, we don't expect you to bring guitar amps in or drag big keyboards or drum kits or things like that. So drummers would need to bring their own uh, drumsticks um, and foot, uh, kick drum pedals, but obviously everything else. They can bring your, your own cymbals in as well if you want to. Um, and then guitarists who just need to bring their instrument and their lead. So the um, amplifiers will all be there. Great, thanks. Um, otherwise, it's too yeah. big. There's so much kit to bring in otherwise. Oh, and headphones for music technology and for music performance. Do you headphones? That's the on ear one, on ear ones, not the earbuds. That is ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you just tell us a little bit more about your industry experience and the rest of your team and how that uh, is important to our students? Why is that important? Okay, so from my point of view, I've been a musician, performing musician for oh God, too long now. Uh, 27 years, I think, roughly. So I, uh, my main instrument is uh, my instruments are guitar, bass, and vocals. I play a bit of drums, a bit of keyboards. Uh, I compose, write my own music, and I perform. Well, before lockdown, I was performing every weekend in a covers band. So um, I've got a wide variety of knowledge of different music styles, music theory, how it's all applied. So I can, um, I can, find, I'll be able to find some common ground with any student on with their musical tastes because I've sort of studied quite a lot of different things. Um, and then we've got uh, Emma, Emma, Amy, and Hannah that are brilliant performing arts teachers. They're like fantastic dancers. Uh, they've all worked in the industry and also done pr uh, like private uh, teaching as well. Um, yeah, so they're all fantastic. Um, Emma's a brilliant. She's got a really a wide variety of skills in like in um, acting, in dance, and in um, uh, musical theatre as well. Um, and then also in music, we have um, Uchan Hatari, who is um, basically a, he's more into the music technology side and composing. Um, and he is also a rapper as well. So he's got uh, some releases on on um, Spotify as as of I. Um, and he is very much um, into the like, music production side of things, knows the studio very well, so he, he's great with that. And Ben Gurney as well is a, 
a serious tech head and he, he knows his stuff about any equipment you could ask about and any anything like that. Um, and Stephen Clee, um, he's also teaching music performance. He focuses mainly on level two. He's a performer. He's written for, um, he scored things, um, scored music app for musicals and like played, uh, played in sessions like that. He does a lot of teaching in private schools and home teaching as well. Uh, and he's done, you know, done a lot of recording on that over the years. So we've, it's, we've got a really uh, large amount of skills between us all, and uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, give you the information that you need. Does that mean you've got lots of network connections as well in the industry? Uh, yes, yeah. Perfect. Um, if you do have any questions at all, uh, please pop them in the live chat, as I mentioned. I'm going to go on to talk more about college life in general, but I will come back to Kenny if there are any questions as well. But like we said, no question is a silly question. So first of all, so both our performing arts and music programs are offered only at our Medway campus in Gillingham, not our Maidstone campus, our Medway campus in Gillingham. It's a multi-million pound facilities and as Kenny said, you'll have access to live rooms, the recording booths and the theatre as well. In addition to our libraries, our LRCs, our refectories, our coffee shops, we've got social zones, we've got so much available to you as a mid College student. So right outside of our my Gillingham campus is a bus stop, so it's really easy to get to us. And our Gillingham train station is about 10 to 15 minutes walk away as well. So your study programme is comprised of four different parts. So your technical and professional qualifications, so that would in this case either be music or performing arts as part of this pie chart. You'll also study personal development sessions, so that's with a specific tutor. And you could be doing anything from mental health right through to having your work ready interview. So that's nothing to worry about. Um, you'll just have a, a brief interview with someone from the industry um, and they'll be able to give you really good feedback. So when you do go out and have a proper interview, um, you'll be ready and you'll be prepared. So English and maths is such a key thing for us. So that'll either be functional skills, GCSEs or stress and challenge. And that's just based on the level that you start with us. And you'll also be an industry placement as well. And that could be, as Kenny said, anything from um, working as part of the pantomime right through to different schools and things like that. So talk to us if you have an industry placement in mind. So, Kenny, I've got a question for you, if that's OK. I'm just going to pop on your mic. Hey, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Hi. Um, does the music and performance course give the opportunity to become a music teacher at the end of it? Yeah, most definitely. The um, All the skills that you learn um, throughout the whole course are those skills that you that you need to be able to teach. Um, so the knowledge of music theory, of composing, of history, of research. So it gives you all the building blocks. Plus, as you go through the course, you can start to, especially when you get to level three, you start to really focus in on the area, on your career. And then we really focus on those skills you need. So you'll be able to like develop uh, lessons and uh, teaching materials as well if that as part of your project if that's what you want to do so uh, yes most definitely great thanks Kenny I've got another question for you if that's okay okay um do we still have to do English and maths if we've already got those those grades that we need have we've already passed them you do not need to do standalone lessons like uh, if you were studying GCSE but the ma English and maths are bedded in within the curriculum so um it will be you'll, you'll know when you're doing it but you don't have any like it's not official officially like right now we're going to sit with and do english now we're going to do maths uh, we'll just be like pointing out the opportunities of how it fits in with what you're doing and um and, and giving you those skills that you need to uh, to improve them perfect thank you um do we need to have a pre-existing knowledge in music theory or do we learn the basics as we do the program um you learn the basics i would expect for level three that you've got at least a passing knowledge of what the notes are on the stave and what the basic note values are but we do go from the beginning in music theory but on level three we go a bit faster than you would do on level two and on level one we just sort of cover the you know, the basics just like what chords are and what the notes notes are called um level two we get a little bit more complicated learning about scales and things like that and then level three we get quite in depth of like knowing your harmony um, what music theory goes with each different style of music um, and how to write chord progressions um, and going into like harder scales and modes and, modes and rhythms. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so the answer is no, you don't need any knowledge, but I'd expect level three to have at least a, a passing knowledge of, of, um, of uh, notes on the stage and rhythms. Great, thank you. Um, so next up, 
when will be the first day of college considering the, the virus circumstances at the moment? Okay, the first day of college, um, I don't know what the actual date of that is yet. It'll be in September. I mean, it may be um, at the start that um, obviously depending on the restrictions on uh, what's happening, I don't know if, um, if Karen will uh, explain more about that in a moment. But so it may be to start with we have um, a, a blended learning system where we do a little bit of college and then some at home as well. But that will be obviously unfold as the, uh, the, the restrictions on um, social distancing are, are updated as we go. Perfect. That's what I was going to say. Right. Um, so normally you will start in September. But once you've applied, you will have an enrolment period as well. And that's when you'll find out when your first day at college is. Um, so as Kenny mentioned, normally you would come to school to college three to three and a half days a week plus your English and maths as well. Um, it might look a slightly different this year and you might be doing some more blended learning which could involve webinars from home with with the tutors such as Kenny. You might be doing some more theory from home and going into college just to do your practicals for instance. Uh, we will share more information about that with you as part of the enrollment period uh, so don't worry you will know about the college processes and procedures at the same time because uh, staff and student um, health and safety is really paramount to us. So we've got to obviously comply with those social distancing rules um, until things have settled down a little bit. So next up, so I've covered the first one here. Can I study more than one subject? Um, so you'll either study music or performing arts. It's not like school where you can do lots of different, pick a mix of A-levels where you can do three or four. You'll study either music or performing arts as your technical or professional program, plus the English and maths if needed, uh, the PPT sessions and your industry placement. Can I go to university from college? Um, a lot of our students do go on to university from college. Um, our programmes do qualify for UCAS points if that's what you want to do and we'll help you through the UCAS process. If that's not for you, we will help you into employment. So please just talk to us um, either as part of your interview or as the, as the programme progresses about what you would like to do. So what do the different levels mean? Uh, so Kenny's gone through roughly what you'll study per uh, different level, but a level two is roughly equivalent to a GCSE and a level three is roughly equivalent to an A level. How much does a program cost? So if, if you're 16 to 18 years old on a fully funded uh, study program, it is free for you. Um, if you're 19 plus, the fees are um, payable, but don't worry, there are concessions available. So please just let us know. Um, we do have student finance available to you. Um, if that's needed, because obviously Kenna mentioned you might be having to wear a uniform some September. I've popped a couple of handouts under the handouts tab on the top right hand side of the screen. And one of them is about student finance as well. Is there a deadline to apply? Uh, we have been taking applications since last November um, and our programmes do become full. So you might be popped on the waiting list. If you are on the waiting list, we will then contact you once this place becomes available. So next up, so life at college. Um, Life at college is so much more than just your study program, it's just studying. Um, so you might be, get involved, as Kenny mentioned, in everything from getting involved on some of these trips to, to the pantomimes. You could get involved in fundraising. And um, we also have some really good student engagement uh, fairs as well. We've got our careers fairs. Um, so really take the opportunity while you're at college to get involved in absolutely everything we can offer. Some of our big events might look a little bit different this year just due to social distancing rules. But we will make sure that the couple of years that you do spend with us are really, really fun and engaging. So what support is available? Um, so Kenny and the rest of the team are really, really friendly and they are here to help you during your time at college. We do have a financial support team at our Medway campus and our Maidstone campus, um, and they can help you with everything from train warrants through to bus passes, through to those bursaries that I mentioned as well. So please do talk to them if you need anything. We've got student welfare on site as well, if you just need someone to talk to. We've got trained counsellors as well. We offer in-class support and exam support as well. So as part of the application process, please do let us know your needs or during your time at college, just have a chat with your tutor about if there's any support that we can offer you. We also have a, a really good team of careers advisors on site as well, and they're here to help you during your time at college and after college as well. So please talk to them if you need any help with your CV, with what to do in an interview, um, right through to who to, who to ask for employment and where to go to university. You can find out more about the support available um, under the help and advice tab on our website. So what's next? So you've uh, you've seen me and Kenny. So what, what happens next? Um, if you haven't already applied, please search and apply online on our website, www.mckent.ac.uk, and please use your predicted grades in the application form. Once you've submitted your application form, we'll then be in touch within 50, about 15 working days um, to arrange a phone interview with you. There's nothing scary, don't worry. Um, it will just be a phone interview with a tutor like Kenny, 
um, and he'll be asking you questions um, to make sure that you're on the right program for you and on the right level for you as well. And then you can find out more about Kenny as well and ask more questions about the program. If you have already applied, that's great. You might just be waiting for your phone interview. Don't worry, we will be in touch soon. So we do have other webinars available to check out um, from everything from apprenticeships right through to student support and some of the other subject areas as well. And you can find out more about those on our website. If you need any help at all, please do get in contact with us. And Kenny's always willing to ask, answer any questions. Um, so please just pop us an email. You can also get um, talk to our course inquiries team on 01634 40 20 20, live chat with them on our website, or just pop them an email to course.inquiries at midkent.ac.uk. So Kenny, I've got a question for you, if that's okay. I'm just gonna pop your mic back on. So what would a typical timetable look like for a student, please? At the, um, at the moment, um, like so before lockdown, most students were coming in either three days or four days. So the timetable, um, it's it's slightly different. So some days you might be in at like a uh, quarter to nine, and then some days you might come in at like half, no, 11 o'clock. So it, it, it can be, um, it's not written in stone at the moment. I think they're being written at the moment. Um, so it'd be like over three or four, over across three or four days. Um, so you'll have different uh, lessons. You have some theory lessons and some practical. Um, like we've both said, September and maybe October may look a little bit different where you're only, you're only in for some of those lessons and some are conducted from home in, uh, on Zoom in a webinar style. Um, but yeah, that's roughly how it, how it will work. So um, you'll have at least one day of the week where you're not in college. Perfect. Thanks, Kenny. Um, and generally, a lot of our students do do their industry placement on that one day a week that they're not yeah. at college as well. I hope that one helps. So you will receive um, a copy of this webinar um, in about half an hour time to the email address that you registered with. If there's anything you want to go back through on Kenny's slides, um, or if you want to share it with anyone else who might be interested in performing arts and music as well. Thank you very much for your time today. And thank you to Kenny uh, for sharing more about performing arts and music. We look forward to seeing you in person soon. Thank you very much, everyone.